Because I'm, I'm filming this, trying to.
When did you start feeling things? Well, actually, I am feeling myself right now. That's the problem. Frankie, look, if you don't come back home empty-handed tonight, you'll feel yourself all you want. Now, <laughs> let's get going. Come on. Oh, I, I, I don't, I, I don't think, uh, I don't think I'm, uh, I'm helping you to bring any girl home tonight. It's not gonna happen. Well, what's got into you, man? That's it. We got to take you to Tony, straighten you out there. And nothing as good as a brajol can fix, huh? <laughs> a brajol does sound good. I didn't know that you were the sausage. <laughs> Me? I love Tony's brajol. It's delicious. And that sauce, oh, my, oh, my. Is that Tony's at um, 14th Street, or is that Tony at his house? Hey, Frank, I swear to God, I'm going to bust down the door right now. If you don't, hurry up. Oh, but Angelo, I promise you won't freak out. I'm going to freak out if you don't open the door. This is me. What the? Uh, Frankie, what? <laughs> is that you there? What the? This is me. This is you? Don't yeah. look like you. <laughs> Frankie, don't look like you. It's me, Fran, not Frankie. Fran? What are you doing? Well, I wanted to see something tonight. And I've been wanting to see it for a while. Frankie, come on. Uh, Frankie, come. Fran. Frankie. <laughs> Fran. Yeah, Frankie. Fran. sing it with the band, maybe that'll attract the babes to you. Well, where's this coming yeah. from? Well, I guess I can sing with you, but like old times, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, you know, you, you, by the way, you gotta put it up to your lips in order to have fun with me. What? Oh, Frankie, I mean, Fran, there's no way that I will forget it. No, no. Oh. Oh, you mean the mic. Yeah, the mic. <laughs> okay. Uh, Alright, this is the refrain of the song. It goes like this. But I ain't giving up my brujol. Oh no. I ain't giving up my brujol. <laughs> yeah, that's something I can sing for sure. Because I ain't giving up my brajol, oh no. <laughs> and I hope you aren't either. You got it, pal. See me. All right. I'm going to right into the... I'll take this. I'll take this. I'll take a quick change. I just put a hat on there. You need this? Yes. Uh, you have to take him down. Thank you. Which is the next one? The next one is... Uh, me and uh, you, Karen. What do you need up on the stage? Uh, two chairs and a box. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got a hat.
So you said on the phone you wanted to talk about taxes and retiring accounts? Yeah, my 401k and taxes. It all started when my, my apartment was poisoned by an exterminator and the doctor said I had chemical poisoning and I must give up my apartment and everything in it. Whoa. Wow, horrible. When was that? About five years ago. So I cashed in some of my 401k and I didn't pay the taxes on it. I just spent the money on relocating. Deal. Well, here's the IRS notice. Uh, it says 10,500 some odd. Can you believe well, this? Looks like it looks like about 4,300 of penalties and interest. Mm. So we could we could probably get out of a lot of that. You know, through there's a request letter you send in as long as you show reasonable cause. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. Good. Running around, you know. Luckily, big business is good. Well, it's better, but uh, my parents got very sick. My brother died. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I've been through a lot too. Both my sister and brother have terminal cancer. Ooh. Oh God, sorry, sorry, Kurt. You know, my parents have been going in and out of the hospital, and I'm trying to keep my business together. Struggling in care, and then we have these 24 7 caregivers. Oh, wow. <clears throat> what are you doing to relieve stress? Praying. Uh, and I'm still writing, I'm writing songs. Still. Mostly. Prayer's always good, you know, but there still seems to be. Want to tell me? Look, you seem distant. We've always shared this friend. We have that common bond. Well, Lori and Kelly haven't been uh, getting along, and Lori's taken an apartment in her shell. And uh, she's close, but it's tough. You know, she's out of the house now. And before that, I had separate apartments for Kelly, and it didn't work out. The expenses were killing me. And saying if uh, the definition of insanity is if you keep on doing the same thing over and over <laughs> and expecting a different result, that's the definition of insanity. Mm -hmm. It must be the same. <laughs> well, what, what do you need to change? Relationships? Well, no, I think, I think the problem is transgender I think or at least a cross dresser or something you know it's been that way all my life really? you didn't know I know no I had no idea wait a minute you you're such like a guy's guy to me well I mean you do have this sensitive side but. yeah well that sensitive side Last weekend I was away in DC uh, at a transgender conference and I I spent Friday, 
Saturday and Sunday as Fran. I drove down there that way and I drove back that way. And I sh I've shown my Fran side to my good friend Ange. This, this is incredible. I mean, you, you've got to use it. You've got to somehow grow from it. You know, you know that you can. You can do anything you want. All you have to do is know what you want. It sounds like a verse from a song. Yeah, my song. <coughs> Your song. You want to hear it? Yeah. I wrote it for my daughter several years ago, thinking she would want to record it. It never happened. Whatever, but. One scene 16, Fran and Doreen. Fran, dressed as a female, age 59, is sitting in her home office in New Rochelle, New York, doing work, but dressed in a wig, dress, heels, and makeup. No clients are expected for an appointment, nor are there any prearranged calls. Doreen, age 76, was a client, and for many years, calls Fran at 10 a.m., expecting Frank, male, to make an appointment. Doreen. Hello. <laughs> Frank? Is that you? Oh, Doreen. Yes, it's me. I want to see you uh, to get, finan get a financial update, especially for the CDs that mature. Oh, sh sure, Doreen. What's going on? <laughs> Dor it doesn't sound like you at all. Are you okay? Well, yeah, I'm fine. Actually, actually, I gotta tell you something. I'm standing here in a wig and a black and white dress and some stockings and low heels, and I'm feeling really good that I'm able to say this out loud and to you. <laughs> Much distance between us until he came out to me. I, 
much a divorce. I know, you always talk so much about them. Your mother, Ellie, loved you a lot. When she worked for you in your Harrison office, and I come in, she'd always pull me aside and we'd go on about our families. Yeah. Mother to mother dog. Yeah. Yeah, my mom always looked forward to, you know, seeing you when you came into the office. Yeah. Ellie's very proud of you. And yeah. how you help so many people in your finances and their lives. And me, big time with my, when, when my husband died, seriously. Yeah. I would have lost it without even you, you even taught me how to pay balance. bills and, and balance, balance your checkbook. Yeah, you didn't know anything. What does your mom say about you? You uh, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, she saw me many years ago, and it upset her. And then she hears from pe from people now and then.
Ready? Each of, by the way, these are true vignettes. Act one, scene 17. Fran and oh, Dick. sorry. <laughs> sorry. Could you, uh, could you do uh, Ellie? Yeah. Sorry. Ellie's Fran's mother. Right. Right. Ready? Act one, scene 17. Fran and Jennifer. Fran, age 59, is dressed as a female for the day, sitting in her home office in New Rochelle, New York doing work and dressed in a wig, dress, heels, and makeup. Fran planned to do work at home alone all day without appointments. Fran spoke to Doreen in the early morning, and they both developed a plan for Fran to come out to her mother, Ellie, and 79. Fran and Ellie are both visible to the audience, but at separate tables to signify being in different homes. Just a girl. Uh, I, I really don't want this, but uh, okay, okay, if you must. Great, Mom. Great. I'll see you at 6.15. Fran, dressed as a female, age 59, arri arrives at her parents' home. As Fran drives up at 6.25 p.m., Jennifer, the 29-year-old caregiver from Ghana, is leaving later than expected uh, than 6 p.m. Jennifer walks down the nine steps to the curb and looks into the passenger side of the car and is confused. Blanc? <laughs> Hi, Jennifer. Is that you? Hi, Jennifer. Yes, it's me. I'm, I'm, I'm dressed as a girl for Halloween. What? What are you saying? <laughs> this is more than Halloween. <laughs> Come on in the car. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll drive you to the bus stop. Thanks. Now, by the way, you look amazing. <laughs> if I didn't know you, I'd say you were a good-looking lady. You look like your your mom in those in those photos in the sun in the den. Oh, thanks, thanks, Jennifer. But, 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 but really, really, what are you doing? This isn't just a Halloween thing. <laughs> well, for the last couple of years, I've been living as a man most of the time. But, you know, you know Lori and Kelly, my both my wife and daughter, right? You know them, and my parents and most of my clients. That's how I live. But. I also live as a female and uh, with certain people, especially my new friends and clients. I live as Fran. So today I was coming over to show my mother how I look. And you weren't supposed to be there, but you're, you're here. Jennifer. Your bus is coming uh, down the street. You better go. Oh, no. I'll stop your car. Oh, let the bus go. I want to talk with you. <laughs> Thanks. The way I see it is that you shouldn't try to adapt who you are for the person you are with because you are not really you. 
It will catch up with you, as it may have already. When my three kids have problems, me and my husband sit down and figure out what is the simplest solution. Because usually that makes the most sense. Now, to me, a simple question is, why don't you live all the time like a woman? You sure seem happy this way. What's your name? My name is Fran. Jennifer, I wish I could, I wish I could do something simple like that. Look full time as a female. I really wish I could, but I can't. My, my, my wife will, she'll leave me. My father won't talk to me. My mother, she doesn't like me. Plus all my clients and my friends who are used to me as Frank, they'll pull away and... No, they will, but they will get used to it. Even your macho father, he loves you. He'll get used to it too. He may take a while, but he'll come around. You've got to be yourself and you've got to choose. Maybe, maybe you're right. It comes down to this, choose one. Male or female? Just choose one. I choose female. It may take me two months to properly plan it, and I gotta write a letter to my clients, you know, then to my friends. I'll let everybody know. I'm doing so, uh, let everybody know what I'm doing so they don't think that, you know, or hear it from someone else and get confused and stuff. They'll be confused as it is. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that, that is a good idea notifying everyone. And I'll be calling, I'll make calls, I'll call people. And then on New Year's Day, which has the lucky number, one, 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 one. I'll stop this nutty life of back and forth, binge and purge, and I'll just live my life as a woman, a girl. Wow, this is amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jennifer. It was simple. <laughs> Just thank yourself for making a good decision. It will work. You are a good person. God will help you, I feel it. Thanks. Go get your bus before it goes. Go. Go. Go, go get it. Jennifer, Jennifer. Thank you so much. See you. There we go. Can I break it there real quick? That's it, right? Yeah, that's it. Thanks. Great. I got two questions real quick. Did you stop writing the final draft? <laughs> no, I and, did final draft. And what the hell accent was that? It's <laughs> a uh, pigeon English Chinese, you know, I, I just... I'm teasing you. Um, no, I, no, I have, I did final draft for, for Bernie, but I didn't have enough time for this. I, I couldn't read it, it was so small. <laughs> Sam, Jimmy? Terry's really good these four scenes were very compelling and they were they it was more of an insight into your journey than i think some of the other scenes have been but also you like in some of the other scenes like the other characters seem to be bigger than your part this seemed much better uh balanced so i thought that was good. really good yeah, uh carrie had a really good singing voice i never heard you sing yeah. 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 I, I was did. terrified I <laughs> just okay. like one or two things thing. uh I think maybe that the Fran, Frank, Fran, Frank from the first scene probably yeah. went on a little too long for me. Yeah. Just like one beat or two beats, not not quite right. that. Um, and uh, the scene with the end scene, um, when she, it might be sort of a performance thing, but um, when she's like deciding if she, this is what she's gonna do, I think it needs to be more like, yeah, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. And he, like, she's like, yeah. I think it'll take me two months. You just pull that like number out of it, it seemed like anywhere. And then like coming up with that, the year, yeah. that the, the one, 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 that's really cool. But like, I think you feel like you really need to like,
come on that. Like, yeah, and this, and it's like he's yeah. steamrolling because it's big, it's huge. It's yeah. Nice. But very nice. Very nice. Very, very, funny. very good point. Jimmy, Jimmy Carey and Jessica. I felt that as I was doing it, that it wasn't, it wasn't big enough the way I was doing it. Uh, yeah, it was a lot of great stuff, and um, I really feel a sort of Neil Simon esque quality to this story mm. because it is. You said that was I said that was so that this was the most Neil Simon esque thing. Now that said, start being more like Neil Simon. You got to get to the point. Yeah. Bobby seems mm. great. There's so much exposition, and I really feel like you're trailing off the script. I feel like there's a lot of like hymns and haws and haws. Got to start cutting right into what needs to be said. Um, again, exposition, we don't need a ton of it. it, no, it what the exposition's gonna do is gonna slow people's think, like, listening process down. Get to the point, always get to the point as quick as you can. Um, and we don't have to explain everything and everyone and everywhere, where something is, what's true, what's not. We don't care, honestly. You know, and, that, and I, you know, I love the story, so I'm like, I'm like yeah. I always throw it at your heart. Uh, no part. Um, the first scene, the song came on kind of out of nowhere. It felt forced. It kind of felt like, yeah. right, uh, Andy's brain just got blown. I was going to say the song. <laughs> like, you're ready to do karaoke. So, find either a smoother way to get into that, or I don't even know if we need the song. Yeah. Because that, and that said, as I get to the other two, three scenes, you got to find strong buttons to these scenes. Bad. Because vignettes are mm -hmm. popping. The vignettes leave us like this, on the edge of our seat to the next scene. Otherwise, if they, if they um, land or if they, uh, Resolve too quickly, too soundly. We're going down, and then we're being brought up, down, and then we get tired as an audience. Uh, the second scene was who? Who was the second scene? You? No, me. No. You were the second scene? Again, the beginning was way too expositional. I almost feel like it could have been her starting, her telling you all your problems, all her problems, all her problems, cancer, this, that, and everything's all fucked up. You're half listening, and then it's right, in, you know, right, you listen. Everything okay? And then it gets into it. More compelling. Because right, it, it went back and forth. Those Rather times. than all the stuff. Her calling me and me. The calling was fine. The calling was okay, but in the office, I felt like get right to it. Uh, like again, we got to trim a lot, you know, because it, it's right, right. there's so much there. We're like we're getting good hot moments, we're like ooh, and then it trails off into like expositional, just everyday talk, and it's so natural, it's good. Secondly, uh, third scene, you right. Again, a great button. That was a really great scene. The, the button at the end, what's the line you know, when, when they, after the mom? Something like, uh, well, that went well, something like that. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a great start, button. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a start, bang, button, blackout. Yeah. yeah. We don't need to hear anything. There's a lot of affirmation and uh, validating who you are in this right. film, in this uh, play. We don't need it. The play is the validation. You being on stage is the validation. Stop validating yourself in this. Right. You don't need it. it the, the play itself is the validation. And who was the last scene? The last scene was great. And again, you just find really strong, and it's a beautiful scene. And again, just trim all the conversational stuff. Get to what's the most important thing to be said, because that's what we're waiting for. And so give the audience what they're waiting for. And that's what I'm saying. Okay, that's a very good point. Anything else, Jimmy? Because that was really long. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right, right. Right. I'm putting this in a, uh, in a book form so it's easy to digest uh -huh. in the next couple of weeks. All right. And I'd like to get it to whoever will Read it. And, and I see this trending. as a play, and I see it, I feel like I'm back when I was a little kid going to all the Broadway plays with my dad, and I feel like I'm watching something other like a Neil Simon S play. It's so warm. This, Great. this play is so warm to me to, to give you an idea. Great, thank you. Anything else, sir? Did you want to say something? Um, sure? The vignettes <laughs> with Ange and with Doreen, they both seem written that that surprise was not very surprising. Like, there was, I don't know whether it was in dialogue or in reaction, um, it just seemed, oh, you're dressed like a girl, okay, well, let's call your mother. Or, oh, you're dressed like a girl, okay, let's go sing karaoke. There seemed to be yeah. something, like one more little thing that needed to be between yeah. those moments. And for whatever reason today, the phrase, this is me, struck me as something bigger. I don't know because and you've seen, you've got so many scenes. There's what 19 or 20 something now. You might want to think about having a follow up show called "This Is Me" to "Once a Boy" because there's so much material you have. You can actually have more than one show here. And the vignettes today definitely seemed very Neil Simony and seemed very much more grounded than the beginning ones that you worked on. So I don't know if the well, difference in those types. 
um, would be two different shows. Okay. Okay. Big but it was really amazing. Good like, I yeah. was so touched in every single one of them. Like you saw more vulnerability of the situation instead of. Um, yeah. Well, in the yeah. the other scenes, I you know I had I wrote these, but I was just presenting the other ones. I, they were sort of out of context. Just so now, maybe things are more in context. I agree. Let's just want to get through people. Jimmy, anything before I give it to someone else? Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Jessica? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, uh, someone else. So, yeah, I, I love this story. I had a couple moments that I really loved. Um, I loved the um, come over tomorrow and be dressed as Fran. I thought that was just so great because it was like, oh, like, I don't know. It was just an off oh moment for me, and I loved it. Um, and she. I, I also loved in the very first scene when he's like, "Come on, let's find some girls," and you're like, "I don't know. You don't have to look that hard." Right? Right. 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 That far, it was really cute moments for me. Um, along the lines with the vignettes, yeah, I think they need to be a lot faster, like less than half the length. Just like get there and go, and we're seeing your journey. Um, but with the first scene with your friend who's from the neighborhood, I didn't buy it at all. He was like, oh, okay, yeah, this is what's happening. Yeah. I don't even think I'd buy it if he was okay with it in the scene. I don't know how it happened in real life. I know this is all based on like real events, but it just seemed to me that type of guy, yeah. he's not going to be okay with it in a couple minutes. Maybe he's not mean, maybe he's not... Right. Hateful, but he's not going to just be like, okay, let's go on with life. It's going to be like a shock yeah. to this this neighborhood guy. Yeah, well, in, you know, in fairness to Ernie, did a great job. In fairness to him, we didn't, we had, with everyone, we didn't do any rehearsal. So well, I sure. think with a rehearsal, it would be some of that would be improved. Sure, but, but I think it's in the writing too. I don't, I don't think that it would just be like, okay, let's just like go on and go out. I think it's a bigger deal. Maybe even, good point. Maybe even it doesn't resolve yeah. in, in some you cases. You can leave that one hanging. It, it, some people are upset about yeah. it. Yeah. The others kind of. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Right. Rachel, go ahead. Okay, so I have seen a number of, of your scenes, but not all of them. So what I have to say is it pivots a little bit on what Carrie said and what Jimmy said is that. Um, there seemed to be less exposition in this, in these vignettes than in some of the earlier pieces. And I was thinking about when they were talking, and the flashbacks to you growing up is so rich, there's so much of it, it's hard to see how the contemporary, more contemporary pieces fit in the same play. So that's something, I'm not, like there may be two plays in this. I love what you presented tonight, um, and it, like I said, even even though Jimmy's points were very well taken and very tightly taken, um, there was less exposition than in some of the, your earlier pieces, especially in the black <laughs> A pieces. lot of it, um, as a and, result of you and guys. And so I appreciated uh, that, that you got more to point. In terms of physicality, you got a really nice profile when you were doing the thing in the car where you had the three-quarter view forward and the full profile of you that looked really good. Okay. Sarah? Great, thank you. Nope. Anybody else? Yeah, you got to sharpen the edges. This story's amazing, but I think everyone's point is right. You've got to sharpen these edges, and when you go off book, and I can tell when you are, and you're just going off your head, which is still funny, it's clever, the other actor gets, the yeah. edges get softened, and the writing, like the beginning of Summer Sand, I think with the, uh, the guy would not accept it. That should be, a to me, a longer scene, even if you have to make it more dramatic in that sense of almost the silence of shock silence, but the edges gotta be sharpened. Because when your edges are sharpened, Fran, shit kills. Yeah. Kills. But it's 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 your feeling, I think, the need to, okay, so I'm losing steam, I'm losing steam, I'm gonna throw something in there as an artist trying to keep it going. And that, in a weird way, is backfiring and cutting the edge because the other actor's waiting to give you that yeah. line or that punch. Because the writing's fantastic. It's just sharpen those edges. I've, I've been take, I've taken several uh, playwriting classes. Mm -hmm. You know, I know you guys have gone through schooling and 
classes and everything. But I found it very helpful no, in that, that plus this group, mm -hmm. plus other groups. Right. I'm open for and I'm, I think I'm listening. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, it's just yeah. everyone that is on your right. side here, but I think they're all saying the same thing, sharpen yeah. those sharpen. edges so that it's bang, 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 yeah. bang, and you've got a sharp plate, and you're coming off. It's, it's edgy, it's beautiful, it's warm, it's loving, it's sad. Just so that if you have to stand in confines of those lines that you wrote, they will too, and you'll find more moments in those lines. Yep. But when they go off, because that's the need of an artist to want to keep, oh, I can lose steam, I gotta do it. Right, right. It gets um, okay. blurred a bit, so. All right, guys, like that. that was good. Yeah. Great stuff, man. Yeah. Next time to do mine again. That's something, and it's it's like the old man and the sea. Like the the rhythm of it, it's short enough for for. Uh, well, I didn't want to use that it, phrase too often, you know. That's it all, it, the greatest showman, you know. And that's. But it, but you you were owning it as as who as who you are and have become in every stage of your life. I don't know. It was just very it was very complete. Really, there's something there.
See, that shit comes in. This fucking homeless I've been celebrating all this shit. It's still going? Yeah. <laughs> it's still going. Right. That's going to be up tomorrow on YouTube. <laughs> That's just complete aggression. I kept stepping out for it. I kept going, oh, Happy boy. birthday, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Isaac. Thank you, Jimmy. Happy birthday, Happy everybody. Happy birthday, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely going on YouTube. <laughs> um... All right, Isaac. Good stuff, man. Thank you. You're really, really good. That's enough. Um, happy birthday to your brother. Thank you. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> Once you feel not included, <laughs> you have a brother. You have a brother. I have brothers. I like him sometimes. You <laughs> post for like album covers. Yeah. Yeah. How funny is that? <laughs> and they're in bands. They're in major. Two of them are in the only record label that's about 11 hours. Yeah, they're in the indie dog. Yeah, I'm post coming in the dog in Boston. I said, oh, fuck yeah. Right. But then that picture was just down the shore because someone said, wow, look at it. The older brother won't put his clothes on. The middle brother's got a hat on, and the youngest brother's buttoned up to the tee. And then someone said, happy record store day. I'm like, I was, like, yeah. I was happy that yeah, I had this shit. Yeah, they got a new album coming out. They're like, yeah. they play with everyone. From the Pixies on down, they play with them. But yeah, they're bad. Actually, good. But Elders are out of here. Elders are out of here because they were so white. They said, we need some electricity. We can't have people to play stuff in class. So on Spotify, Elders are out of here. The Beatings was the big band that they started. They started. But yeah, both of them, a guitar singer and lead guitar. Yeah, that was his so I'll see you this weekend. I'm not excited about it, but whatever. <laughs> so, I do I do. I'm more excited about seeing Christian. I'm more excited about seeing Christian. I was nervous, man. That shit hit me. Like, that's like waking up like in the middle of the first thing you see. Oh, that sucks. Like, for my brother. I'm like, and I'm reading it, and it's just goes, oh, oh, yeah, exhausting. Oh my god. And my youngest brother's like, no, oh, fuck this shit, it's an update. You didn't read it. My brother goes, why would I read anything more about it? Why would you send me more things? Why would you do that? It's the fucking thing. So that freaked me. So that was scary. But it's back, so it's fun. No, we're fine. I got nervous. Turn around now. Yeah, well, yeah, I.